Flight 5. Many challenges lie ahead. However, SpaceX has been diligently preparing, considering a variety of potential scenarios. Their forward-looking position is good for navigating the complexities of the journey ahead. How will the capture process go? What preparations has SpaceX made for this upcoming flight? Find out in today's OENR Studio episode. After a long hiatus dedicated to preparation, SpaceX has revitalized the launch site, turning it into a hive of activity in late September and early October. Integration and blowpipe tests have been conducted continuously, producing encouraging results. Given the success of recent evaluations, particularly the integration test conducted on October 7th, as well as the water dillage system assessment on October 8th, SpaceX has confidently announced its launch schedule for October 13th. However, it is important to note that the FAA has indicated that they will not issue a launch license for Flight 5A until the end of November. Alternatively, they may allow SpaceX to proceed with the launch only if the company follows the same procedures as used in previous flights. The relevant question arises, has SpaceX stopped its attempts to capture Super Heavy? Fortunately, recent evidence suggests the answer is no. They will continue to capture it as intended. That's because an update to the homepage reveals that SpaceX has officially revised the launch process for Flight 5, incorporating additional steps that we've long anticipated. Specifically, at 6 minutes and 56 seconds after liftoff, SpaceX introduced a procedure known as the Super Heavy Landing Burn Shutdown and Catch Attempt. This step occurred much earlier than I had previously predicted. On previous flights, where Super Heavy typically landed in the ocean around the 7 to 8 minute mark, I had anticipated that capture would occur about 10 minutes later, taking into account navigation and deceleration operations. This timeline progression reflects improvements made in our operational efficiency and overall mission strategy. Sure, please provide the text you'd like rewritten, and I'll be happy to assist. However, according to the timeline, the period from the separation of the two stages to their respective completions will only span 4 minutes and 15 seconds. Why does the return to the launch site occur more swiftly than a landing in the sea? I invite your insights on this matter in the comments section below. Following the catching step upon reaching the launch pad, Super Heavy will position itself in the center of the chopstick, at which point the engines will be shut down. Then Super Heavy will be secured by the chopstick. Once everything is stable, the chopstick will rotate to position the Super Heavy onto the OLM, where it departed just a few minutes prior. Indeed, this represents a significant breakthrough in rocket technology. Upon achieving success, SpaceX will have effectively jump-started Starship's journey towards attaining a launch cadence comparable to that of the Falcon 9, with the initial milestone being partial reusability. However, if Falcon 9's journey concludes at that point, SpaceX aims to advance its Starship project towards full reusability by catching the spacecraft on future flights. Achieving this goal hinges significantly on the success of Flight 5, which will serve as a crucial foundation for their ambitions. Not only was it added to the timeline, but SpaceX also clearly articulated the criteria for the catch in their recent update. The company stated that the fifth flight test of Starship aims to advance towards full and rapid reusability. The primary goal is to achieve the unprecedented feat of returning to the launch sites, capturing the Super Heavy booster, and orchestrating another Starship re-entry and landing burn. This mission aims for a precise splashdown of Starship in the Indian Ocean. We have highlighted that significant upgrades to both hardware and software have been implemented across the Super Heavy, Starship, and the Launch and Catch Tower infrastructure at Starbase in preparation for this flight test. These enhancements reflect our commitment to ensuring optimal performance and reliability. SpaceX engineers have dedicated years to meticulous preparation and months to rigorous testing for the upcoming booster catch attempt. Technicians have invested tens of thousands of hours in constructing the necessary infrastructure to optimize our chances of success. We make no compromises when it comes to safeguarding both the public and our team. The return will only be pursued if the conditions are favorable. Moreover, Elon Musk has affirmed that SpaceX intends to retrieve the booster, provided that all systems are functioning optimally. However, this step is not mandatory. In the timeline preceding the catch step, SpaceX maintained the option of a splashdown for Super Heavy should a catch attempt not occur. In the recent update, 
The company emphasized that numerous distinct vehicle and pad criteria must be satisfied before attempting a return and catch of the Super Heavy Booster. This process will necessitate fully operational systems on both the booster and the tower, alongside a manual command from the mission's flight director. Should this command fail to be issued before the boost back burn concludes, or if automated health checks indicate unfavorable conditions with either the Super Heavy or the launch tower, the booster will autonomously revert to a trajectory designed for a landing burn, culminating in a controlled splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. This indicates that SpaceX will forego attempting to recover it if deemed a risky option. The foremost priority is the safety of both individuals and the launch system. However, the realization of SpaceX's updates ultimately hinges on the FAA's decisions. In a recent update, the FAA announced that in mid-August, SpaceX submitted additional information regarding its proposed Starship Super Heavy Flight 5 mission. The FAA is actively engaged in the ongoing review of this information. The FAA will render a licensing decision once SpaceX has fulfilled all the necessary requirements for licensure. Somewhat ambiguous, yet this is a promising indication. We remain optimistic that the approval process and preparations will proceed without a hitch allowing us to witness the launch attempt this October. Kindly leave a comment below to show your support for SpaceX's initiatives. Thank you for your engagement. To stay updated on SpaceX's development journey, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Your support is essential for us to keep bringing you the latest insights. In conclusion, let us revisit and succinctly summarize the remaining aspects of the flight process. First, at one hour and 15 minutes prior to the flight, the SpaceX flight director will conduct a poll to ascertain readiness and confirm the go for propellant loading. Liquid methane and liquid oxygen will subsequently be loaded onto the ship in Super Heavy. The complete fuel loading procedure is estimated to last approximately 47 minutes, with the ship finishing at T minus 3 minutes and 20 seconds, and the booster concluding at T minus 2 minutes and 50 seconds. During the fueling process, an engine chill step will be executed on both the booster and the ship to mitigate temperature discrepancies between the fuel and the engine. This ensures optimal performance and safety throughout the operation. Upon the culmination of these procedures, approximately 30 seconds prior to liftoff, the SpaceX flight director will validate the readiness to proceed with the launch. 10 seconds prior to takeoff, the flame deflector or water deluge system will be activated to mitigate the heat and pressure produced by the engine subsequently. Three seconds prior to launch, the Raptor engines will engage sequentially. Beginning with the engines of the inner and middle rings, we will subsequently address the remaining engines in the outer ring. The moment we've all been eagerly anticipating is almost upon us. Starship Flight 5 is set to officially lift off. This marks a significant milestone in our journey. In addition to the previously mentioned super heavy catch or splashdown step, the subsequent steps closely mirror those utilized in prior flight tests. During this flight, approximately one minute after liftoff, specifically at T plus one minute and two seconds, the rocket will achieve its maximum aerodynamic pressure, max Q. At T plus two minutes and 33 seconds, the super heavy main engine cutoff will be executed. At T plus two minutes and 41 seconds, the ship's engines will ignite followed by the separation of the two stages utilizing the hot staging system. Following a successful separation of approximately seven seconds, the super heavy boost backburn will commence, steering the rocket adeptly. This pivotal maneuver is essential for ensuring precise trajectory adjustments. This process will continue for approximately one minute, concluding at T minus three minutes and 41 seconds, at which point the super heavy boost backburn will cease. Contrary to numerous earlier forecasts, this flight will indeed incorporate a hot staging jettison step occurring at T plus 3 minutes and 43 seconds. SpaceX elucidated that this measure aims to minimize the mass of the booster, thereby facilitating a smoother landing. However, with the overarching objective of achieving full reusability, it is likely that SpaceX will refine the system to enable future flights to land with the booster intact. Following the jettison of the hot staging ring, the Super Heavy will transition into the supersonic phase at T plus 6 minutes and 8 seconds. Subsequently, it will initiate the landing burn at T plus 6 minutes and 33 seconds. 
In contrast to Flight 4, these two stages occur at an earlier point in time. This may be attributed to the anticipated timing of the landing maneuver utilizing the Mechazilla arm or the splash down, as mentioned earlier. Following the super heavy journey, we must deliberate on the fate of the ship. This discussion is crucial for understanding its future. After approximately six minutes, the ship's engine will shut down at around T plus eight minutes and 27 seconds. At this juncture, the vessel is anticipated to achieve orbital insertion and commence its journey, which will last for over 40 minutes. As of this flight, SpaceX has yet to incorporate the crucial step of igniting the engine in space, a phase they have previously omitted in earlier missions. I sincerely hope they include it in this endeavor. Following an extensive journey in orbit, SpaceX is set to initiate re-entry at T plus 48 minutes and 3 seconds. In approximately 15 minutes, the ship will shift to transonic and subsonic states at T plus 1 hour, 2 minutes and 34 seconds, followed by 1 hour, 3 minutes and 43 seconds, respectively. At T plus 1 hour, 5 minutes and 15 seconds, the landing flip will be executed, followed by the landing burn 5 seconds thereafter. The mission will end exactly one hour, five minutes, and 34 seconds from now when the craft makes contact with the ocean. The entire process of Flight 5 will be smooth sailing, assuming everything goes according to plan. The actual timeline may show some variability, though it is unlikely to deviate significantly. Of course, here is a more refined version of your text with appropriate line breaks. There are many challenges on the horizon for SpaceX, However, I am confident that they will be able to effectively meet them thanks to the extensive preparation they have done in the past. The upgrades to Super Heavy have been largely secretive, hidden behind the doors of the imposing Mega Bay. However, in a recent update, SpaceX has confirmed that improvements have been made to the Super Heavy's hardware and software, as well as its associated tower. As mentioned earlier, the preparations have been underway for several years and have undergone extensive testing requiring tens of thousands of hours of dedicated effort from our engineers. As for the ship, in addition to the similar upgrades to Super Heavy, SpaceX has reported that engineers have dedicated more than 12,000 hours to replacing the entire outdated thermal protection system. The overhaul includes the installation of next-generation tiles, additional layers, and enhanced protection that integrates the cover structure. These improvements are expected to allow Starship to perform a flawless landing, a feat that came close during Flight 4. The anticipated launch date is fast approaching, prompting a flurry of activity and careful preparation for the upcoming flight that promises to usher in a new era for the aerospace industry. So, stay tuned and prepare yourself for what's to come. The excitement is building. Otherwise, everyone, that concludes today's episode. See you in the next one.